like hunters on safari, a team of stalwart scientists makes their way through the woods. Armed with electricity and nets, these are men on a mission. Their target is the Harpeth River in Franklin. Their objective, to find, catch, and count fish. Now we're gonna do big eye shiner, scarlet shiner, one long ear. Northern hog sucker. That's the smallmouth. It's a hard task because fish are always on the move. Spring flows often trigger migrations as well as temperature and photo periods trigger movements in fish. And some fish spawn in the, in the fall, some fish spawn in the middle of the summer, and some fish spawn in the spring. Move some of those bigger rocks with your feet, Scott. That means the river has to be sampled several times over different seasons. When we do our sampling, it's just a snapshot in time. So we know what's happening there right then and there. And seasonally, we have different migrations, and you'll pick up different species. Brooks Silver side, he has that silver stripe through there, but you can see through his whole body. You can see his gut there, lateral line right through here. That's their sensory perception is the lateral line. That's how they detect movement. And... Nathan Singer and his team of biologists have been counting fish on this section of the Harpeth and its tributaries for four years now, trying to paint an accurate picture of how the removal of a dam on the river has affected what lives here. These are called red line darters and they have a little white hourglass at the base of their caudal fin. You see how narrow their mouths are. They can get into those spaces between the small gravels and rock and pick off aquatic insects. We've never gotten this many red lines here, so that, that is a good sign. This will give us a nice timeline as to how quickly the river species return, how quickly the aquatic life, the insect life, respond to the disturbance that comes along with removing a dam. Called a low head dam since it's meant to allow water to flow over the top, the dam on the Harpeth might have looked pretty and did add oxygen to water downstream, but really it did more harm than good. Low head dams are harmful to fish habitat and fish populations. They block movement up and down rivers. The water behind the dam ends up losing oxygen in the summer, and the water in front of the dam, even though it oxygenates a lot of times, there's a lot of um, input of nutrients that have been building up behind the dam. You'll get fewer species upstream of a dam like that, and actually the tributaries that are impounded on upstream, you can lose diversity in those because fish aren't able to make migrations and share their information or their genes. Through the efforts of the Harpeth River Watershed Association, the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation, and others, the low head dam was removed in 2012. It was a dirty job that required work to be done in the stream itself. It didn't actually damage the stream bed. You did have some turbid water that would have to be released during the process. That's all you saw, but all the water that had any turbidity to it at all, we had secondary structures downstream to catch as much of that as possible and slow it down and let it fall out. After the dam was removed, the banks were re-sloped and old trees were used to both stabilize the river banks and create habitat for fish. The trunk goes in first and the big root wad sticks out and then the fish can hide under there and the root wads collect dirt and things will grow in them. A year later, the river has made a remarkable recovery. These rock structures that they put in have actually created some scour pools behind them and allowed for the substrates to settle down and become actually part of the shoreline and stabilize that. And it's beginning to grow up in grasses and forbs and eventually there'll be trees there. These other rock structures placed in the center of the stream, called cross veins, reproduce the good effects of the dam while removing the bad ones. It gives you the oxygenated water coming over, deep scour pool, and it also allows, because you have these interstitial spaces that fish can actually swim up and migrate through, so there's no longer a barrier there. The initial surveys close to the dam site were disappointing. There were fewer fish than expected. But that's all changed. Blunt nose and two big eyes. Just today, we saw an incredible response of a great multitude of fish in this stretch directly below the dam. And we also are seeing fish migrate upstream. My nephew came and joined me one day, and he was stunned 
He said, I just had no clue that when you walk across the creek, this is what could be in there. Two, the blunt-nosed minnow. While these fish can't talk to us. When they're displaying for a mate, they'll raise their fin up against a, a rock, and uh, it looks like they're guarding eggs. If they could, it's a pretty good bet they'd say thanks to all the people who made this extreme river makeover possible. They're fascinating, their habitats, their behaviors, and their colors. I mean, some of these darters are even more beautiful than something that you would find in your pet store. The diversity of fish here is great. And that's good news for everyone. I'm Ken Tucker on the Wild Side.